Welcome back to Man on a Mission. Thanks for joining me. I'm Pat Martins with Faith Lutheran Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. Last week I introduced you to the book The Hole in Our Gospel by Richard Stearns. If you haven't already, I'd invite you to pick up or get a hold of a copy. One of the fascinating things I find with the book are all the mind-blowing statistics in the book related to various things such as disproportionate wealth, poverty, disease, and more. And how we as a Christian community have basically ignored the imbalance and in many cases have total disregard for how it has affected large segments of people. I'm going to spend the next few weeks talking about some of these statistics and interspersing it in the mix as we go along. I do want to throw a few direct stats from the book out right here though. For instance, 15,000 Africans die daily due to preventable, treatable diseases. 26,575 children die each day of largely preventable causes related to poverty. 25,000 people die each day due to hunger. 5 million people die every year of water-related illness. And these stats may be a bit dated, probably 2008 or so. And I think progress does continue to be made in some of these areas, but the problem is out there nonetheless. What is astounding, though, is the fact that even one person dying of these causes is tragic when the resources are available to eradicate this. It has been there for a long time. One sentence he has in this book almost defies logic and has stuck with me. Some scientists believe that one out of every two people who have ever lived may have died of malaria. What? That's crazy. I don't know if that's true or not, but even if it's not, it speaks to the magnitude of the disease itself as a whole, and that malaria has long been a death sentence for many people and still is today. How can that be? Why is that? It's curable. But in many third world countries, the medicines are not readily available to the people who need them, or they cannot afford them. You have to be kidding me. Can you imagine if we had a disease like this killing people on a daily basis in the United States, what the outrage and level of anxiety would be? People would de be demanding a cure. Oh, wait a minute. We do have something like that right now with the current pandemic we are facing, don't we? And what are we doing in America? We are in a race to develop and administer vaccines to combat it. So why is there not that same sense of urgency to stop death by malaria? Why? Because it doesn't affect me here. That's someone else's problem. Why don't we have the same sense of urgency to stop the death of tens of thousands of people daily due to starvation when ample food is available throughout the world? Well, I have plenty of food. It doesn't affect me. An anonymous source once noted, sometimes I'd like to ask God why he allows poverty, suffering, and injustice when he could do something about it. To which the person was prompted, well, why don't you ask him? His response, because I'm afraid he'd ask me the same question. You see, as Christians, we have the ability to make a difference. God's given us what we need to help these people. We choose not to. It's someone else's problem to deal with. Out of sight, out of mind. So why do I bring this to light? Can we as any individual address these issues? No, maybe not individually, but why as a church or Christian community do we not play a more active role in addressing the needs of our fellow man on this earth when the needs are there? Let us not fail to do something just because we can't do everything. You know, one of the things I think mission trips do, like the One Faith Church in Jefferson City takes each year, is it helps keep a person grounded. You see firsthand the poverty and it sticks in your mind. I think that's a reason some people will not go on such a trip. They think they're going to see things that are going to embarrass them about what they have and how they live their own lives. And you know what? It probably should embarrass most of us. I'd encourage you to take such a trip though. You need to see it. It needs to be ingrained in your mind so that you will not forget such things. Well, I thought I was going to get into some Bible teaching today, but I didn't quite make it. Next week, I promise, we are going to talk about Lazarus 
and not the one you're probably most familiar with. So until next time, be in the Word and be a man or woman on a mission.